With ticket sales on the decline in the early 1950s, Warner Brothers needed something big to bring customers back to the theater. At the same time, a young Vincent Price was on the lookout for his big break. Together, they produced one of the most iconic films of the horror genre. What's up, everybody? I'm Tom Ferenkopf. In today's episode of Tom Talks Film, I'm going to explore the relationship between the Warner Brothers studio, the frightfully exciting Vincent Price, and their production of House of Wax 1953. To further dig into this topic, I'm going to explore three key areas. One, pre-production and the circumstances leading to the film. Two, production and the revitalization of the 3D experience. And three, the post-production marketing campaign that launched a horror career. Early in his career, Price went back and forth between Broadway and cinema productions. His first film role came in Roland Lee's Service Deluxe 1938. Shortly thereafter, Price would return to Broadway and join Orson Welles at the Mercury Theatre. With his primary office in New York City, Harry Warner was acutely aware of the Broadway happenings. Taking notice of Price's early work, on at least one occasion, Warner offered Price a long-term contract to work with WB in an attempt to lure him away from Universal. Price declined and instead focused his energy on Broadway. During the same time, the number of U.S. households with a home television rapidly increased. Americans were trading in their trips to the movies for a TV in the living room. As a result, box office sales steadily declined over the late 1940s and into the 50s. In an attempt to get those customers back, WB took a big gamble. Having proved their willingness to take big risks by being the first major studio to adopt synchronized sound, Warner Brothers viewed the resurrection of 3D movies as their next big opportunity. Once it was seen as a viable investment, numerous studios started production. After a 30-year hiatus, 3D films crashed back onto the scene in a big way. In 1952, a small independent production company released Buona Devil. On a budget of only $323,000, the film managed to rake in over $5 million. Warner Brothers would release their first 3D film less than a year later. The director of House of Wax was Andre de Toth, who achieved over 50 directing credits during his career that started in 1939. During a childhood accident, de Toth lost his left eye, which is important to note because he was unable to view the 3D effect, which requires the use of both eyes. In addition to de Toth, here we can see cinematographer Peverell Marley and camera operator Howard Schwartz. Having completed some of his best work at WB between 1945 and 1950, Peverell was a top choice. Howard Schwartz was brought in for this project because of his first-hand knowledge of the 3D camera with his work on Buona Devil. In an attempt to unleash the potential of the 3D camera technology, filmmakers even went as far as breaking the fourth wall with shots such as this. Here, we can see Reggie Rymel acting as the carnival barker speaking directly to the audience while his paddle ball nearly jumps off the screen. Typically reserved for films with a runtime greater than three hours, it was rather unusual for House of Wax with a runtime of just 90 minutes to have an intermission. Similar to the early days of cinema, this intermission was intended to allow enough time for the projectionist to switch the complex 3D film reels and ensure a functional operation. Now back to the show. The opening scene nearly burned down the studio. After the crew ignited three small fires, the set quickly erupted in flames and rapidly spread out of control. Understanding the expense in time and money to replace the entire set, Detoth continued to roll film and what the audience sees here is the actual studio burning. After spending a million dollar budget and nearly burning down the entire studio lot, WB needed to recuperate its losses. To achieve this, the studio went on an aggressive marketing campaign to drive customer interest. While WB was the first major studio to start shooting in 3D, Columbia released their first 3D film two days before House of Wax. With multiple studios releasing pictures around the same time, the craze for 3D was launched. House of Wax set numerous local box office records and at the same time was the longest running film at the downtown Paramount Theater in Los Angeles. Domestic box office receipts totaled more than $23.8 million. 
Similar to the upgrades required for synchronized sound, to show 3D films of this era, theaters were required to upgrade multiple pieces of equipment. With numerous studios offering 3D pictures, the cost of upgrading was a worthwhile investment. WB and Paramount quickly cornered the market on production equipment. During the 1950s, studios, independent filmmakers, and exhibitors invested large amounts of capital into this modernized technology. As a result, the industry produced more than 60 films during the decade, and while today's 3D films use a different process, the excitement around these films still remains. While Price's career included more than 200 acting credits, his work with WB would total four films. The Private Lives of Elizabeth and Essex, House of Wax, The Story of Mankind, and Serenade. Most of his career was spent with 20th Century Fox and American International Pictures. In the 15 years preceding House of Wax, Price acted in only one horror role, representing 2% of his work. During the 15 years after, that percentage jumped to 30, with the number of roles totaling 25. And in the last 30 years of his career, nearly half of all released pictures were of the horror genre. When we consider the renewal of 3D films, the unusual circumstances around production, WB's massive marketing campaign, and industry-wide good timing, I argue House of Wax was the catalyst that launched the unforgettable career of the horror legend Vincent Price. Thank you for joining me in today's episode of Tom Talks Film and the exploration of how Warner Brothers and Vincent Price came together to produce one of the most iconic movies of the genre and thus launched a horror career unmatched by any other. Citations for this project are listed here and in the video description below. Until next time, get out there and make something scary.